my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher. Welcome to 15 minutes of Zen. In these videos, I show you how to draw one tangle using the Zentangle method of drawing. So today I'm using a Micron PN plastic nib pen. I have a graphite pencil for some drawing and shading and a blending tool called a tortillon. I'm also using a small two inch by two inch Zentangle brand tile called the Bijou Tile. All of these uh, materials are available from Zentangle.com. You can also use any pen, pencil, and paper that you have around your home. It does not need to be anything fancy. Today I have a coin. This is a quarter and I'm going to use that to draw a circle on my tile. Okay, let's get started. This one is called Ico. Somebody requested that I draw this one and it took me 10 attempts. So if you don't get it right away, it's okay. Um, but it did take me 10 times to kind of figure out the flow. So hopefully I can explain it in a way that it doesn't take you 10 attempts, but um, will hopefully be a little bit simpler for you. Okay, so to make this one, I'm gonna put my coin in the center of my tile and I'm gonna trace it with my pencil. Very lightly. And then I'm going to put a line across the center. And then I'm going to divide the top half and the bottom half each into three parts. So I'm going to make like a V shape, or it'll end up being an X. But I want each of these shapes to be pretty similar in size. So this one's a little bit wide. So I'm going to come out there. doing it in pencil so you can change it as needed. Okay, once you have that little shape done, I'm gonna continue with pencil. Typically with Zentangle, we go right into pen work, but for this one, I'm going to do it in pencil and then we'll trace it at the end. So where each of these lines meets the circle, I'm going to put a little seed shape. So pretty thin. And by starting out with this little grid, it just makes it easier for me to space these out. Now that I know how to draw this pattern, I could do it on a, a piece of paper and not draw out the grid, but this is how I'm going to start ours today. Okay, so now that we have those little seeds placed, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to pick this one up here in the left hand corner and I'm going to start at the point on the right hand side. So I've got this little shape, I'm going to start at the point. What I want to do is to draw, it's basically going to be, let me see if I have a piece of scrap paper. Okay, it's basically going to be this S shape. So I'm going to imagine coming under here, and when I get to that end, I'm going to jump over and stop. So I'm kind of following this and then I jump up and over the next seed and stop. So I'm going to turn my tile because that's easier for me. I'm going to do the same thing over here in pencil. I'm going to imagine coming up over here, getting to that end, and jumping over. And I want to keep this space pretty equal to the space before it. 
Don't make them too tiny. They can be a little bit wide. Let's try that again. Imagining going under the seed shape and then twisting up and over. What a nice round bump. And then I'm just letting it stop somewhere up above. We'll connect these later. Okay, for my next one, imagine coming underneath, get to that edge, jump up and over. Under that little shape, get to the edge, jump up and over. And the last one, same thing. And if you realize that your seeds are too close together or too far apart, go ahead and erase them and move them. Whatever works for you. Okay, I'm gonna go underneath, jump up and over. Okay, now I'm just gonna kind of look at it and make sure that these are all about even. Double check yours. Okay, so now for this part, I'm going to aura that line, which means I'm just going to draw beside it. So I'm gonna go under that little seed pod and I'm going to make it that same shape. Then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna to touch this side of the seed. So this is my new line. I've got that same shape, but I'm coming under the seed and then up and over. Let's see how I have this nice little band here. Okay, I'm gonna turn it. And now I can actually touch this side if I want and make that shape. Okay, so let me show you something. When I make this shape, I'm going to look at the seed pod before it, which is this little thing here, and I'm going to imagine this line coming out over here because this little band is going to tuck in or under. So I wanna come off the space here and aura this line and then jump up. So I'm making that same little S shape, but I'm kind of imagining this line connecting to this one, if that makes sense. We'll do some more. Okay, so here's my seed. I'm gonna go underneath it, but I wanna come out right here where this little seed, I could imagine this line coming through. So I'm gonna curve down and then up, making that S shape, down and then up. Here's where that little seed would come out. So I'm gonna go right there. And I'm gonna curve down and then up. These knots are so fun to make, but it definitely takes a a little bit of practice to get the feel for it. All right, I turned it again. Here's that previous seed shape, so it's gonna come out about there. And I wanna aura that line and then go up. And if the seed up here needs to be a little bit wider or longer, go ahead and fix it. This is why we did it in pencil. I've got one more section to do. So I'm imagining that line coming out here, dipping down and then up. It's starting to take shape. Okay, the last thing we need to do now is connect all of these little leftover lines. And when I do that, so this line's gonna come down here, but I want it to sort of match up to that next seed so it looks like a band. So I'm gonna come down over here and then this seed, I'm actually gonna change the shape a little bit. 
So it looks like that line connects with that one. I hope that made sense. I'll do it a couple more times, obviously. Okay, so here's this seed, and I want this line to sort of match that one. See how then it looks like it's tucking underneath. And if you need to change the shape of your seed right now, go ahead. This one's going to come down like that. They don't have to line up perfectly. You still get the same effect. But again, I did it 10 times. And um, I'll show you my page, actually, just so you can see kind of what it takes. OK. So here I started just try to draw them on my own. Here I made them too far apart. And none of my bands line up. So just so many attempts. This was kind of my favorite one. That's sort of what I ended up with. But it's a little tricky. Okay. Get a peek into my process here. Okay, so I need this one to come down and meet this one. And this one to come down here. And that one. So we have a whole bunch of lines. And I'm going to pick up my pen now. And instead of drawing in the seeds, I'm going to draw in these little bands and let the seeds sort of happen on their own. So I'm just going to do that little S shape. Just turning my tile each time. And inking in those lines. And even now when I'm using my pen, I can adjust them a little bit. If I want to make these bands a little bit wider or narrower. See how that's coming together? I've got all of mine done. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, and then I'm going to grab an eraser. And I'm just going to erase some of those pencil lines. Look at that pretty little knot. I love that. Okay, so that is the essence of Ico. And now you can leave it just like that, or there's so many fun variations. And if you look on tanglepatterns.com, you can read about this pattern and you can see some of the variations that she made. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the two different bands. So we've got this little triangular band here and then this little one here. So in one of them, I'm just going to put orbs or circles. To fill that in. And if you have some areas that are more narrow and some that are wider, it's okay. I always say no one's going to look at this and tell you that you made Ico incorrectly. People are always impressed with our tangles, even if we don't do them exactly as we planned. Just make sure you're staying within that same band. And 
And then I'm going to ink in those little tiny extra spaces in between the circles. So one of the variations that she did had an additional little line on each side, but um, I just felt so happy that I mastered this with a single line that I did not try to add a second border. Maybe that's for another day. Okay, we're at our 15 minutes already. I'm going to probably go another minute or two. Get those filled in. And I'm going to put a tiny little reflection in each one. Okay. Then on my next one, there's so many options. Pick your favorite. I'm just going to do, um, I'm sure it's a tangle. I just don't know the name of it. But I'm going to do an S shape with some curves. Well, it's kind of a backwards S, I guess. But I'm just sort of putting in these little curvy things. Again, fill it in with whatever you would like. You could also add patterns to the inside or to these little seed pods. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to take my pencil. And each time a band goes underneath another one, I'm going to add a little shadow. So it comes up here, which means it's going over this one. And then it ducks under, so I need a little shadow. So wherever it might create a shadow. And that is it for shading. So if you want, you can add, you know, a little bit on the outside as if the whole thing has a little shadow. You could put some around the outside. But I'm just going to keep it nice and simple like this. I think it looks beautiful. And I'm going to put my initials. And there we go. I hope that made sense. I hope that you enjoyed it. And um, follow me on Facebook at Let's Tangle to share your work. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.